Oh Lord, make us to know you more fully and knowing you to love you and loving you to serve you. To the glory of your name. Amen. I must confess that I have one, well, no, I probably have many failings as a vicar, but one of my worst is I'm very bad at names, aren't I, Elsie? <laughs> so those who are new here, that's my wife, Sheila. Uh, <laughs> names are vitally important. Any teacher will tell you that. If you've got trouble in the playground, you don't know who the children are, and you say, stop it, you two, you, you'll, get, you'll get there in the end. But if you can just sort of say, James, Philip, stop it. You're in charge. If you know the name, you've got power. Almost instantly. Names are very important. We had a big list of names in our first reading uh, because it was important to know who the apostles were, important for the church. But in the gospel, Jesus says of God, I made your name known to those that you gave me. The name of God is what he made known. Because in the thinking of the ancient world, names weren't simply labels you stuck on people. They actually defined the person and gave you power over them. Uh, in fact, Arabs reckon that the reason that camels have a particular smug look which camels have the Arabs reckon it's because apparently in the Quran there are 99 names of God. But he actually has 100 names and camels know the extra one. <laughs> so the name of the God is very, very important. And in the Old Testament, the name of God, which we're now going to show you, this is the best kept secret ever. The name of God was so well kept only because it says you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain it was only said once a year by the high priest on the day of atonement when he went into the holy of holies the only time that it would be uttered for fear that they might take it in vain uh, and as a result we lost something about it Hebrew like Pittman shorthands does all its vowels as little dots under the letters and they change the dots and if you change the dots, you change the word, and it goes from whatever that word is to the word Adonai, which is Lord, which is why we call upon the name of the Lord. Um, but in losing the dots, the proper dots, they lost something of the meaning, so we're not entirely sure what the name of God is or was, but it was something like, and I'm treating this with due respect, Lord, Yahweh, uh, which got transliterated into German as Jehovah, rather badly, uh, which you'll see in some old hymn books and things. But Yahweh, and it means something like, I am, or I am the one who will be what he will be, or it has to do with being, I am. In fact, somebody has remarked rather cynically that when Moses asked God for his name, and the Lord replied, Yahweh, I am. He should have said, yeah, but who are you? Uh, who he was, he won't define by his name. Because he is in control. And we don't have the power of the name. Except that, in his generosity and love, he goes on to define himself. And in the Old Testament, he defines himself by the law and by his mighty acts. And in the New Testament, he defines himself by the name of Jesus. And Jesus went on and defined the nature of God. And he actually spelt it out in John's Gospel. There's a series of sayings where he says, I am. And what he says, I am, each time tells us something about God and how we relate to him. So the first thing he said is, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will not hunger. 
It's part of the Lord's Prayer, isn't it? Give us this day our daily bread. He is the God who cares for our most basic needs, for our everyday life. He's not utterly remote. He understands our need, for he created us. And he feeds us and sustains us. At the most basic level, that is how we relate to him, in gratitude for all that we have. And then Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I come to the conclusion that I'm slightly affected by a sad seasonal affected disorder. At least I generally well know that when the first really sunny day of spring came this year, I was much brighter and more cheerful. There's something about light as opposed to darkness. It's not as essential as bread, but really when the clouds are lowering and the sky is grey, you go down with the level of the clouds. And when the light comes, you live. And you can't walk in darkness, not real darkness, which we don't know because we're surrounded by street lights and so on, but in real darkness... You are lost and confused. I am the light of the world. And then he said, I am the gate. If anyone enters through me, he shall be saved and should go in and out and find pasture. The image there was of a sheepfold. At night, the sheep are gathered in for safety. And the gate is protection. It keeps out marauders. He keeps out wild animals. He keeps out threats. He is the God of our protection, but not of our imprisonment. He doesn't imprison us, because by day the gates are open, and the sheep can go out and feed and flourish. It is a care and a love which protects, but does not imprison. And by analogy to that, He says, I am the good shepherd. Probably one of the most loved of the images. Apparently in the catacombs, uh, where the Christians hid in Rome when they were persecuted, the first drawings, the earliest records, are the drawings of a shepherd. He is the good shepherd. And I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. And the good shepherd would lay down his life for his sheep. And the relationship between Middle Eastern shepherds and their sheep is particularly close. They really do know them by name. They're not like they are nowadays, numbered uh, and sealed with an EU stamp. They knew each of their sheep and counted them. Because they probably only had a couple of dozen at the most. Think about the relationship between Sean and Bitzer. That's the sort of relationship we're talking about. Really really close and intimate and with us in our troubles. And he says, I am the resurrection and the life. I said in my last sermon, if our hope for this life only is for this life only, we of all men and all women are to be pitied, quoting St. Paul. He promises us not just life here and now, but eternal life. And he says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. He is our guide. He will lead us through our lives. He has a plan and a pattern for our existence. He knows what he wants us to do to serve him. And he will lead us on in his way. Not in the world's way, but in his way. And finally, he said, I am the vine. I have a particular fondness for this one. But it's the first, well, not just because I like vines and I like grapes, and I like what they do to grapes as well. But the first sermon I ever preached was on this text. Uh, And what was I saying? Simply that the vine feeds and nourishes. If you are a branch of the vine, which is what we are, 
You don't exist independently. You draw your sustenance and your life out of the main stem. And as long as you remain attached to that, you will fruit. You will be productive. You will be abundant. We abide in Christ. We hang. We depend on him. He is the true vine. We are the branch office, the branches. And Christ Church is a branch office of the Church of God. He is then our sustainer, our light, our protector, our shepherd, our saviour, our guide and our joy. Because you can't sum up everything that God is in one word. Because at different times we have different needs. We are in different moods. We go through different experiences. There's a name for every experience by which we can call upon God and know that he will hear us because his nature corresponds to our needs. You can call on him by any of those names. But above all, you can call on him by the one name that sums them all up. You can call on him in the name of Jesus. And later on, Jesus would say, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. I will give it to you. There is power in the name of Jesus, as that poster says. I looked at it and I thought, I like that. That's powerful. And then I thought, yeah, but that's how an American would put it. How would I put it for Christ Church? This is how I'd put it for Christ Church. <laughs> Keep calm. There is power in the name of Jesus.